So in this video, we're going to look at the combined gas law, and you're going to learn when to use the combined gas law, how to make sure your units are the same on both sides, and then how to do the math correctly. So let's get started. So first off, when do you use the combined gas law? Here's the thing. You're looking for initial and final conditions. So in this problem, we start out with 2.3 liters. We have a pressure of 1.3 atm. And they ask us, what is the volume? when the pressure is increased to 4.7 atm. So the pressure, it changed. We have an initial pressure right here and then a final. So we're gonna use the combined gas law. So in this case, we're told the temperature remains constant. So we can just ignore the temperature right here. And now we just have Boyle's law. So let's put the numbers in. We have our initial pressure, our initial volume, Here's our final pressure and we're solving for V2. So to get V2 here by itself, let's divide both sides by 4.7 atm. So now this cancels out and we're left with V2. So over here we have atmospheres in the numerator and denominator, cross them out. We're gonna be left with liters and that's what we're looking for, that's volume. So we know we set this up right. Multiply the top and then divide by the bottom, that gives us V2. We end up with 0.64 liters. So remember, when something's held constant, we can just take it out of our combined gas law. Let's do another one. So pause and see which equation you need to use for this one. So I can see I have volume and then a temperature, and we wanna know what the volume is after it cools, afterwards, it's new temperature. We have initial and final, combined gas law. So pause again and see if you can solve this one. But there's something we want to watch out for. We have our temperature, it's in Celsius. We really want to work in Kelvin. Sometimes it works if you use Celsius, but it's best to be in Kelvin. So to do that, we take the degrees Celsius, add it to 273, that'll give us Kelvin. So I'll do that for both of these here. So you always wanna be working in Kelvin with both the ideal gas law and the combined gas law. All right, now pause, see if you can solve this problem here. So they say the pressure remains constant. Let's just get rid of that. So we just need to put these variables in. So we're solving for V2. Let's multiply both sides by 288.15. And this will cancel out here, giving us V2 by itself. Over here, Kelvin cancels out, left with liters. That's what we're looking for. Multiply, divide, we end up with 3.13 liters. So make sure you're working in Kelvin when you're doing any of the gas laws. Okay, let's do another. All right, pause and give this one a try. Just try to set it up and we'll come back and talk about it before we solve it. So we have initial conditions and final. We're gonna use the combined gas law, but we have Celsius. We wanna get that to Kelvin and then pressure. We have one atmosphere and then MMHG. That's the new pressure. These have to be in the same units. So let's first convert this over to, let's make it atmospheres. Here's how you do it. Essentially, we're dividing this number by 760 millimeters of mercury. It's because one atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. That's a conversion factor. So we multiply, this cancels out, we divide this by this, we get 2.08 atmospheres. So now these are the same. Let's write this up here. For the temperature, since it's in Celsius, we add 273.15, we get so now all the units are the same, and that's really important. We plug it into our equation, and now I'll work to get V2 by itself. Multiply both sides by this, so it'll cancel out over here. Divide both sides by this, so it cancels out on this side. We have V2 by itself. Multiply everything here, and then here, then divide this numerator by the denominator you end up with. 8.6 liters. So again, make sure everything works out to be the same with the units and you'll be good. This is Dr. B looking at some examples and explanation about the combined gas law.
Thanks for watching.